Okay, so now it's time for me to share with you one of my favorite exercises that I use to create content for my courses. It was the exact thing that I used to create Playful Prosperity, and I've used it in several other courses I've created and with people that I've worked with one-on-one -on -one and in groups, and it's really, really powerful, and it's really, really simple. See, the challenge that I had when I first started trying to create Playful Prosperity was trying to figure out what content to put in, and then even more importantly, or even more kind of dauntingly for me in that process, was what order to put it in. And so the way that I first tried to attack and approach creating the content for Playful Prosperity was in the way that is, is probably fairly traditional, and maybe the way that you've tried before to create any piece of content or courses or modules or things like that. And it's to start at the beginning. And that makes sense. It's like, cool, how do we start? Like, what should I be teaching them? And that became really overwhelming for me because I couldn't quite narrow in and focus in on where I should start. Right? Sometimes it felt like I was getting maybe too granular, I was getting too fundamental. Other times it felt like I wasn't getting fundamental enough. And it became this like an exercise in my head that really never made it onto the paper. I never really felt secure about the content I was creating. And so I really wanted to see if there was some other way that I could do this that felt more effective and more efficient and made the process more fun. So some of you may remember uh, a guy by the name of Michael Jackson, one of the greatest, if not the greatest pop star to ever live. And he had this dance that he was very famous for, and it was called the moonwalk. And if you Google Michael Jackson moonwalk, you'll see what this thing is. But it was this amazing dance where somehow he was moving forward across the stage, but his back was actually leading him. He was walking backwards, but somehow moving forwards. And when I saw that dance, and I saw kind of how he did that thing, it gave me this idea of maybe approaching content creation from a different way. And that's how this process, this, this moonwalk process that I have now for content creation was born. And so the way this works is instead of starting at the beginning and trying to intellectualize what the next step in the training should be, which was what felt super overwhelming for me and just didn't work, I instead started at the end. I looked at what was the end transformation that I wanted somebody to experience from being a part of my program. And this one was in particular was Playful Prosperity. And I asked myself, what's the gap here, right? How do people think about the world? What do they believe about the world when they come into the course? And what do I want them to believe about the world when they're done with the course? And that was fairly simple for me once I did this work and sat down was I figured out, well, when people first come into Playful Prosperity, they believe that they have to be serious in order to be successful. And by the end of Playful Prosperity, I wanted them to see that they could be just as high performing and just as highly productive without being super serious that they could bring more lightness or more levity to their work and they could be sincere and focused about what they were doing, but they didn't have to be too, too serious and make it overly significant. So if I look at the end of, of what I want them to achieve, of what I think that end result should be, the moonwalk process essentially says, looking at that end goal, looking at the end transformation that I really want people to experience from taking my course, what would be the thing they would have to know, believe, or practice in the world for that to be possible for them, okay? So that may not make sense kind of at a high level, but I wanna give you an example and you'll see just how simple this can be to use this moonwalk process to go from the end back to the beginning. So if we know that for playful prosperity, the transformation that we want is for people to recognize they can be less serious and, and have more fun, be more playful, be more joyful, and be even higher performing and more highly productive, I ask myself, what are they gonna to need to know, do, or practice in the world in order for that to be true for them? And I sat there and thought about it, and I said, from a very simple level, I don't wanna get overly complex or try to make this you know, overly uh, clever, just from a, a real perspective, I asked myself and I said, well, in order for them to have that result where they're experiencing some kind of performance and productivity in their life from being not so serious, they're gonna to have to take some kind of action in the world. Seems simple, right? But like that's really what needs to be done. That there's no way they can create uh, whatever they wanna create in their world if they're not taking some kind of action. And so I asked myself, well, what would that mean then for a course module? And I came up with the final course module for Playful Prosperity, which was how to go from inaction not doing anything, how to go from inaction to in action, right? So getting people to actually start taking action in the world. So in order for them to have the end result of going out in the world and being high performing and highly productive, being not so serious, they have to start taking action. So my final module of Playful Prosperity was about taking action. So then I asked myself, again working backwards, well, what would somebody have to know, believe, or be doing in the world in order for taking action to be possible for them. And I said, okay, well, what holds people back from taking action? Like, what would be the thing that would come before that? And I said, oh, 
It's resistance. If you're feeling too much resistance, you're not gonna take action. So the course module before the final course module became how to make resistance non-existent. So do you see now if we now flip that and go back forward, if somebody now knows how to get over feeling resistant, then it's gonna be much easier to get them to go and take action. And if they go and take action, there's a high likelihood that they will experience this transformation that I want, to, that I want them to experience. So I'll go, I'll go one more level deeper. So people are sitting there saying, you know, I, I, I wanna help people get over resistance. And I say, okay, what would need to be in place? What would they need to know, believe, or be doing in the world in order for them to get to a place where they'd even be opened to overcoming resistance? And I thought to myself and I said, oh yeah, you know, a lot of people think that they need motivation so that they can get into a place where they can even start looking at the fact that they're resistant, right? Because if you feel like you don't have motivation, you don't even think about action. You wouldn't even get to resistance until you actually felt motivation. So the module before, the resistance module, was called how to put your motivation on speed dial. So do you see how this works? Once somebody has their motivation on speed dial and they say, great, I feel motivated, oh, but now I'm feeling resistance to getting started, cool, I'm gonna help you make resistance non-existent, and they go, okay, cool, I'm not resistant anymore, but I'm not exactly sure what to do next. I say, cool, let's help you go from inaction to inaction, and now you're experiencing the transformation that I hope that you'll experience. So I hope this makes sense to you. It's a lot easier to keep doing that, and you keep working backwards, just continually asking yourself the question, what does somebody need to know, believe, or do in the world for this next thing that I'm teaching them to be available to them?